and welcome once again to the Movies and Stuff show. My name is Dan, and I'm here to celebrate 30 years of Reanimator. Reanimator is one of the quintessential cult movies of all time. Blending horror, comedy, and science fiction, Reanimator continues to be talked about in high esteem even 30 years after its release. Loosely based on the H.P. Lovecraft novella Herbert West Reanimator, the film was written and directed by Stuart Gordon. It starred Jeffrey Combs, Bruce Abbott, David Gale, and Barbara Crampton, and was produced by Brian Usna, who would go on to work with Gordon on several films. The film was distributed by Charles Band's Empire International Pictures and went on to make over $2 million in North America, more than double its $900,000 budget. The film was praised by critics and gave us some of the most memorable, grisly, hilarious, and downright disturbing images put on film in the 1980s. We here at the Movies and Stuff show had the great honor to speak with Stuart Gordon, Jeffrey Combs, Barbara Crampton, and Charles Band, and spoke a bit about Reanimator with them. So sit back, help us celebrate 30 years of Reanimator, and enjoy the show. Well, you know, I then, well, I mean, there's so much history here over so many uh, years, but uh, I started a company in the early 80s. After I sold Media Home Entertainment, then I started another video company called Wizard Video, better known for the big box VHS tapes and movies that I licensed, like Zombie and uh, Boogeyman, I Spit on Your Grave, and others. Uh, and then I started a company called Empire uh, Entertainment, because my first love was always making movies, and all this was mm -hmm. more like a hobby, and you know, what you did in between making your epics and uh, made a movie called Ghoulies, which did very well, and Metal Storm, and all those early films sort of got Empire rolling. And then Empire started making a whole bunch of films in the early to mid-'80s. And um, Stewart came into the fold because my dad, who was working with me at the time, um, there was a connection. I forget what, what it was, but whatever it was, someone brought... Uh, Stewart and Brian Usna, who was the uh, producing partner of Stewart's for Reanimator into Empire, and you know they presented uh, this idea of of doing a Reanimator. Um, and and uh, long story short, that's how Stewart and I met. We made the movie; it was very successful. Um, and then uh, I think from that point forward, every few years, I made another movie with Stewart from Beyond Dolls, Robot Jocks, uh, Castle Free, Pit and the Pendulum. You know, we've been. We've been collaborating on a lot of films over the years, and uh, he's a great guy. Well, it's kind of amazing to me. Um, I mean, I'm happy that people are still watching it, uh, but, you know, I never expected that it would get this kind of a, a reception. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know you, when you make a movie, you, you hope that people will enjoy it, but you don't expect that they're going to be watching it for 30 years. It's uh, pretty surreal uh, to think that it is 30 years ago uh, because so many of my memories of that experience are still crystalline and fresh. Uh, and it just doesn't cite uh, like some alternate universe that, that I, I can't quite wrap my head around it. However, you know, we went to Horror Hound this weekend and, and, uh, you know, I was thrilled that, uh, you know, Bruce Abbott w was attending. He doesn't do a lot of conventions. And uh, we just fell right back into uh, our ridiculous rhythms. And I had a gas just hanging with Dan Kane again. And he has remained a great good friend of mine, even though we don't see each other very much. So... It was like a homecoming for me. Uh, it was really great. We were kind of like our characters. So we were kind of stuck in a at this convention, but it wasn't really if we wanted to go get something to eat. It wasn't so easy. And so here we were in a predicament together, but solving the problems and doing the work. <laughs> Even though uh, I was the damsel in distress in Reanimator, it was it was really clear to me that I didn't want to make her how Jeff's character uh, recalls me saying that I'm a bubble-headed co-ed. I didn't <laughs> I didn't want her to be that. I wanted her to have you know some smarts to her. I mean, she's the dean's daughter. She's got to, you know she's in college. She has to she has to be you know have some wits about her. So I wanted to make sure that 
um, I colored her in such a way that she wasn't really so much of a victim, even though, you know, she, we all know how she ends up at the end. Right. When we were working on the movie, we you know we said we've got to come up with something that's going to set it apart from the other films, and you know that was the scene. No, she didn't leave him, but she did walk out of the screening room. I remember she came to see. I think it was just dailies, and stood up and said, "You know, David, how could you?" and walked out of the screening room. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I started reading, I, you know, I read him when I was a teenager, you know, and uh, I really found his stuff to be very, very scary. And um, I started with Reanimator because I wanted to make a Frankenstein movie, and I was looking for a storyline that if I could work, and someone suggested I take a look at Herbert West Reanimator, and it was a story at that time that was totally, it was completely out of print. Couldn't find a copy of it anyway, and ended up having to dig it out the public library special collections and um and when i read it it was like here it is this is a gold mine let's see about you did you actually read any hp lovecraft prior to doing reanimator no i had no yeah. idea who he was <laughs> no and and jeffrey always says the same thing you know he he thought uh lovecraft was a boat we were going on a boat <laughs> trip to make the movie but um no i think you know in some respects i think that stewart has introduce the world to Lovecraft and um, I said this recently at the Stanley Film Festival um, they gave him a Master of Horror Award and, and showed uh, a 35 millimeter print of Reanimator as well that was this past weekend and uh, what I said to him was you know people think that you've introduced the world to Lovecraft but really I think that Lovecraft has also introduced the world to you uh, I think that's very true. I think that um, his, you know, he has a distinct mark on American cinema and is a, a true master of horror in every sense of the word. And uh, I think a lot of filmmakers did have a sense of Lovecraft, um, and Stewart has really, you know, brought that forward with his movies. But also, there's something about Lovecraft that that um, that has introduced the world to Stewart and his aesthetic and how he makes a movie. And, and so I think in, you know, in combination somehow beyond the grave, uh, they're working together. Uh, before you did Reanimator, were you familiar with Lovecraft's work? Not, not in the slightest, dude. <laughs> I, I, when I auditioned for Reanimator, I did not know anything about Lovecraft. Uh, at my audition, Stuart Gordon said that's, you know, this is based on HP, Lovecraft, and I was, I just bullshitted my way. Oh, yeah, great. <laughs> but I had no frame of reference. <laughs> and this was in the days really kind of before the Internet. Right. You think about it. So it wasn't like I could pick up my iPad and Google Lovecraft and Wikipedia and learn something uh, beforehand, I, I, you'd, you'd have to probably go to the library and <laughs> and and you know go to the catalog card and find it to 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 to, to learn. It was a lot harder to pick up quick information like that, you know. So, but it didn't really matter, quite right. frankly. It just didn't matter because the story stands alone on its own, and uh, you know. Something about what I was doing fit the tone of the piece completely unintentionally, you know. So that's, uh, I don't think Bruce knew who, what Lovecraft was or Barbara, actually. I, I just, uh, or David Gale. We were actors at, uh, you know, looking for opportunities. And, uh, and then here comes this uh, bloody script. <laughs> Well, Lovecraft, the thing about him that I think is really fascinating is that this guy, I think he really was a science fiction writer. And so he even gives a, you know, sort of a, he gives a formula for, you know, how to create this, how to create the, the reagent. Uh, he doesn't give you the exact dosage, <laughs> either, but he kind of lays it all out there. And it's, uh, you know, when I was doing the research on the 
film, I talked to a lot of, you know, doctors and scientists, and they said, yeah, we're actually working on something along these lines. Um, you know, the idea of, you know, they said, you know, it used to be that when someone's heart stops, that they were dead. Right. And now, and now there's so many different ways to get the heart started again. You know, you know, they can, they can uh, use a defibrillator, they can use, you know, an, an adrenaline, they can use all sorts of other things. And, um, you know, now, you know, what they're focusing on is, is brain death and trying to find a way to reverse that to be able to bring someone back. And they've been doing a lot of experiments with freezing cold water and things like that, you know, and, and uh, keeping people on life support systems uh, who are actually clinically dead, but, you know, until they can find a way to bring them and cure them and, and bring them back to life. So, the, the you know, the scientists embraced the ideas in the movie. You know, they said this. You know, this is something that we're all really working on, and you know, which I which I found wonderful and scary at the same time. <laughs> That's fascinating. Yeah. I think I knew the. What, we did a test screening of it. Uh, I think it was in San Francisco, and when we got to the end of the movie, I don't know if I'm going to give too much away here, but the. Um, you know, the in the last scene, somebody in the audience yelled out, "Use the juice!" <laughs> <laughs> and that's when I sort of knew this movie's working. <laughs>